nothing has actually happened in college football since Tua Tagovailoa's 41-yard rainbow landed into Bone to Smith's hands to win Alabama the 2017 national title, but that hasn't stopped fans from laying bets on the 2018 Heisman winner. According to the updated odds released Monday by LV Superbook, Stanford running back Bryce Love is still the favorite, trailed by Wisconsin's Jonathan Taylor, same as the initial 2018 odds and the most recent update. Love opened at 7-1, moved to 5-1 last month and sits at 6-1 today. Taylor started at 8-1, increased to 7-1 last month and is now back at where he started, 8-1. But those runners have been joined by the man who ended the 2017 season, Tagovailoa. After starting in fourth place, 10 to 1, and remaining there in June, Tagovailoa is now level with Taylor at 8 to 1. Tagovailoa's ascent has come at the expense of Arizona quarterback Khalil Tate, who started in third place at 9 to 1 and is now among a gaggle of fourth place contenders at 15 to 1. 6-1, Love 8-1, Tagovailoa, Taylor 15-1, Georgia QB Jake Fromm, Oregon QB Justin Hebert, Penn State QB Trace McSorley, Tate 18-1, Alabama RB Damian Harris 20-1, Washington QB Jake Browning, Ohio State RB J.K. Dobbins, West Virginia QB Will Greer, Oklahoma QB Kyler Murray, Michigan QB Shea Patterson, Zauburn QB Jarrett Stidham, Georgia RB DeAndre Swift Vegas, or, at least, those who give their money to Vegas, is banking on Heisman voters breaking form in a major way by riding with love as the favorite. The last non-Alabama running back to win the Heisman was USC's Reggie Bush in 2005, and the last one before that was Wisconsin's Ron Dane in 1999. Meanwhile, no Alabama quarterback has ever won the Heisman. Love is the nation's leading returning rusher, carrying 263 times for 2,118 yards, 8.05 a pop the most for any player with at least 200 carries, and 19 touchdowns. Taylor ranks just behind Love with 1,977 yards and 13 touchdowns on 299 totes. Tagovailoa completed 49 of 77 passes for 636 yards with 11 touchdowns against two interceptions while rushing 27 times for 133 yards and two touchdowns. Though the sophomore appeared in nine games in 2017, he has yet to start one. Jesse Iwuji was already a hero before he drove on to California's Interstate 5 last Sunday. The former Navy football player and track and field athlete now races in NASCAR's K. After a 15th place finish in the Carneros 200 at Sonoma Raceway in Sonoma, Califf on Saturday, June 23, then stuck around to watch the Toyota, Save Mart 300 the following day. While nearing the finish line of his six-hour drive home, Iwuji noticed a family of four standing near a stranded minivan on the shoulder of Interstate 5. Leaning on his naval training, Iwuji first tried to move the vehicle out of harm's way and then, when the car could not be moved, pulled the family to safety. They were kind of going in and out of the van and underneath I saw a lot of fluid leaking from the motor and there was a small little fire that began to light, he told the Associated Press. Me, just from my background, military and also racing, we all know that flammable fluids can ignite pretty quick and start a huge fire pretty quick, so just instinctively I just stopped on the side of the road and I ran over to them. After helping the stranded family, Iwuji then posted a video to Twitter of the wreckage. Safety 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 guys and girls. I saw a small little fire underneath this family of Foss van and I knew right then it was about to be bad news. I'm glad I stopped and got them away because they were still worried about getting stuff out the car. Things went from small to bad picked out twitter.com slash avenue 6C7J76ND, Jesse Iwuji, at Jesse. Iwuji, June 25, 2018 A native of Carrollton, Texas, Iwuji played defensive back for the midshipmen, appearing in 24 career games from 2006 to 2009. All I was doing was just being a decent person, Iwuji said. For me, it just comes from my background. 
Just being in the military, I've seen a lot of things happen, seen a lot of bad situations happen. Being in racing, I've seen a lot of bad situations happen. I just didn't want that to happen to these folks. Penn State will be giving former Notre Dame running back C.J. Holmes a second chance to play college football. The former Irish running back will join the Nittany Lions this fall and is reportedly enrolled at Penn State now. He will be eligible to play for Penn State beginning this fall. The news first broke on Alliance 247 message board. Holmes will be walking on with Penn State after being dismissed by Notre Dame last December. Holmes was given the boot from South Bend following a shoplifting arrest at a Macy's department store. As noted by one foot down, Holmes has a sister at Penn State who will be running track for the school. Holmes appeared in eight games as a freshman for Notre Dame last season, in which he carried the football eight times for 32 yards. Although Penn State is looking to replace Saquon Barkley, the running back situation is likely to be handled primarily by Miles Sanders, which means Holmes is most likely going to provide some depth early on at the position before he gets any chance to contribute in a meaningful way. Holmes is not without potential, however. The former four-star recruit, according to Rivals, was the fifth-best running back in the class of 2017 and he was the second-ranked player in Connecticut. If he manages to stay out of trouble and embraces this opportunity extended to him by James Franklin and Penn State, the Nittany Lions may have picked up a nice player that could eventually play a role in the offense. Follow at Kevin Onk FB The Big Ten is looking to gain support for the first uniform injury report system in college football. A proposal from Big Ten athletic directors was submitted to the NCAA's Football Oversight Committee last month seeking to implement a standard injury report system that is similar to the injury reporting system in place with the NFL, according to Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports. The driving force behind such desire for a standard injury reporting process appears to be influenced by the Supreme Court's recent decision to allow for the legalization of sports gambling on a state-by-state -state basis. With more and more states jumping into allowing for legalized sports gambling, including some states within the Big Ten footprint, the Big Ten is looking to find a way to provide more transparency in order to protect the integrity of the game. And while the idea may be similar to the basic function of the NFL system of reporting injuries, the Big Ten is not looking to copy and paste it in every fashion. We don't know if we want to report as many days as the NFL, Ohio State AD Gene Smith said in Dodd's report. But clearly on Mondays if somebody is injured from Saturday and you know they're not going to play the following Saturday because they broke their leg, why not just say that? The NFL's injury reports are updated on a daily basis by each NFL franchise, and the injury information is made available right on the team's websites. NFL teams are then required to release a final injury report days before they take the field for their next game, and this injury report may rule out specific players from playing in that weekend's game. The NFL may be transparent with most of the injuries for the sake of good sportsmanship, but the information is a valuable tool for those wishing to place some money on the games in football pools and various bets on the results and the spreads of games. the Big Ten has their way with this mission of introducing a new injury report system to college football, the same information will be used in similar ways for those wishing to bet on college football games where allowed. There are two concerns with this proposal, however. The first is getting enough support. Coaches will have to no longer accept that what they say or don't say with regard to injuries will no longer be tolerated. Numerous coaches choose not to discuss injuries at all during a season. This would no longer be tolerated if the proposal moves forward, but every coach will then be on a level playing field regarding injury information. The second concern is how this impacts a student's privacy. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act protects medical information regarding players from being shared publicly. Therefore, allowing for injury reports to be standardized would require finding a way around the HIPAA laws currently in place designed to protect a player's privacy.
Because of that, the Big Ten's proposal may not be able to gain much traction if players are not on board. Follow at Kevin Ankh FB if it has not already been decided upon, it appears we have a new Black Friday tradition firmly in place in the SEC. Arkansas and Missouri will play each other once again on the day after Thanksgiving this season, the SEC announced today. The Razorbacks and Tigers will square off at Missouri for an afternoon game on November 23 with a scheduled kickoff time of 2.30 p.m. ET confirmed to air on CBS. This will mark the fifth straight season the two schools have faced each other on Black Friday. When Missouri first joined the SEC, the Tigers played fellow former Big 12 member Texas A. Since then, Missouri has played Arkansas and Texas A. Despite Texas A, Missouri is coming off a 7-6 season and is entering the third year with head coach Barry Odom. The Tigers have won four of the six meetings between the two schools since Missouri joined the SEC. Arkansas went 4-8 last season and will enter 2018 with a new head coach in Chad Morris. Follow at Kevin Ankh FB.